Come along with me for a first look at the brand new knowledge agent in SharePoint. I'm going to take you through the three major things that you can do with it. And let's see if it's everything it's cracked up to be. Is it everything we might have hoped for? A couple of things before you get started. This is an opt-in feature. You will need your admin to do some stuff in the background to enable this for you. Information here if you need to pass that along to the right person. And then once that's set up, if you're a user and you need to be on a SharePoint site where you've got access to at least reading things, if not editing things, you will also need a Microsoft 365 Copilot license. That's the paid license. This one is included in that paid license. If those things are in place, you will see this little hover here just comes up in SharePoint, open knowledge agent, and you've got those options in front of you. Let's take a look at the first one here, which is organize this library. Now this is designed to help you organize your document library by automatically creating columns of metadata. I've got one example there, which is version number, which is something I created earlier in learning how to do this so that I could show you what we're doing. But you can use AI to help extract information from the documents and put it in those columns. This is a big one. I have found it's actually pretty good. I'm working with demo data here, but this is something that's going to help the performance of using your documents with those Copilot agents because almost everyone I talk to wants to use their SharePoint libraries of documents with Microsoft 365 Copilot. Having the metadata in there, the next step, this is all like brand new at the time of recording, the next step a little while from now, depending on when you're watching this, is that the Microsoft 365 Copilot agent will be able to use that metadata. So that's the goal of this, where we're heading here. So what you can do, let's just start by getting it to suggest some columns and I'll show you the difference between what it comes up with and what I can do as a user who knows a little bit more about this. Top tip here, I'm gonna click create columns and what it does, that automatically puts a prompt in here saying based on the documents, please suggest three columns. Now this could come up with anything depending on what's in the document. When I did this, I got overexcited when I set this up in my demo system and went straight in and pressed it straight away. I got absolute junk the first time. Give it a bit of time. After you've enabled this, just don't, don't use it straight away. Just let it sort of do some background processing because I'm coming back the next day now and it's giving me much more sensible results. So it just needs to do its thing in the background. We will come back to that. So what it's done is offered me these three suggestions. So we've got the document version. Now I already had a version number in here, so it's kind of coming back with something different. That's not particularly useful. The review date, yes, that's useful. And you can see because in my real messy data here, the review date is kind of all over the place. Sometimes I've got it formatted a certain way. So this is actually something that's useful for me to realize that I perhaps haven't done a good enough job of that's pulling out the metadata, but my metadata is actually kind of a bit of a mess. And the policy owner, whether it's owned by me or owned by our people and culture department. So I can choose to accept or not. Like it hasn't made any changes. Remember, co-pilot, not autopilot. You are the human in the loop in charge of saying, yes, please make the changes. So this is showing me review the changes before applying them. And I can cancel if I don't want any of that, or I can click save changes and it will actually add those columns into either into this view or into a new view of the document library. But it does affect that change for, for everybody. So I've got down the side here, these little cards that show me what has happened. So this document version, I don't want that. I've already got a version number, so I can just click remove and that's gone. Review date, I think that's okay. We can keep that in there. Policy owner, sure, we can do that. Um, okay, let's do that. So I'm gonna click on save changes. So it's visible to everyone and I wanna save the changes to the current view or I could create a new view. And now we will go from those columns being sort of blued out, <laughs> that's a word, grayed out, blued out. Once that takes effect, those columns will be added in there. Now, the next thing that happens is this autofill activity. This is actually what happens when you first enable this feature that allows it to kind of process the metadata. And this is happening in the background all the time. So if you actually update a file or add a new file, you'll see 
that these things process. And I will come back and, and show you that. But that's that activity that just sort of goes on in the background as you as you start to, to do those things. Because you'll see these things now, those columns aren't filled. Review date and policy owner. What I was looking at in the AI generated piece was just a, a preview of that. So as I work through the video here, we'll close this and it will take a little bit of time. My demo document library here is not massive. Obviously, in a real scenario, if you've got a lot more going on, it will take a little bit longer than what we're seeing here. Back to my agent here, let's go back into the organize this library. Let's say instead of create a column, instead of pressing that button, I'm going to ask it to do something that I want to do. So having the AI suggest stuff for you is a nice way to get started. But realistically, you as the super user here, you know what's going on and what you might be aiming for. So maybe I can say add a column for document type. Now, for those who are pedantic like me about spelling and capitalization and grammar, you'll also notice that if I literally type it in lowercase letters, it's going to create it in lowercase letters, which I don't like at all. So just be careful with your capitalization. And you'll see what it's done is put things in that are sort of, it's really not giving me much more than just the name of the policy. So that's not terribly smart. What I can do is either start again, but you've also got the option in here to edit this. So what we're going to do is say, classify the document type as either policy or template. Notice that I'm using the capital letters here. And then what I want to do is test to see if that makes a difference. So I can highlight all of these, preview the results, and I will have to fix that column name. But see how now it's coming up with template or policy, and it's actually able to decide between those things. If I decide in the end, you know what, I'm still not loving this whole thing, we can just cancel that and cancel that. I've unsaved changes, that's fine. And so now it, it goes away. So you can muck around with that and see what it does and preview and edit it. But in the end, you're choosing the things that actually go in there. Now we're gonna leave that one cooking up in the background a bit to populate those columns. I'm gonna show you what happens if you upload something different here. So if I, for instance, take the Contoso birthday leave policy, let's open this and let's say we are going to have a new version of this. So I'm going to create a copy in the same folder and we're gonna make this version two of that document. And let's say we make a change here where at the moment all employee, oh, we've even got a typo in there I can fix, all employees part-time and full-time are eligible for birthday leave. Let's change that to say it's actually all full-time employees are eligible for birthday leave. And then we're going to come down here to the bottom and update this and say this is version two. This is uh, the... September 2025. This is actually when I'm recording it. So if you're watching this in the future, hello, chances are this technology has come a fair way since then. And hopefully I've done an update. All right. So that's good. It's saved and I can close that. Now, what will happen if, if I refresh this, the version number column was already in there. Oh, you'll see now actually my policy owner and review date columns have actually been added in there. So that's good. My version number column was already in there from before I made this video. So now I've got Contoso Birthday Leave V2, but because I've done a save as as a previous file, it's picked up the same metadata that I had before, but it will update it. And it takes between five and 10 minutes or so. But if I come in here and say, autofill columns view recent activity, you can see what's going on. So it actually has sort of taken that in and processed those columns. Let's give it a second here. Yeah. It doesn't do it straight away. So it's done those ones, but it will take a little bit to update that, but it will come up and update that. So we'll come back to that in a little while. You'll see. So the next thing we're going to have a look at is the idea of creating a rule. If you're familiar with Power Automate, I'm just going to set an expectation now you'll be disappointed by this. This is not for you. Power Automate can do many more things than what we're about to show. This is designed to be a very sort of lightweight rule creation engine for users. It is very limited. Let me know what you think of this one in the, in the comments. Not if you're a Power Automate user, perhaps if this is new to you, let me know how you think you would use it. So what we're going to do is come back to the knowledge agent here and choose this option to set up rules. Now, what this does is allow you to set a rule based on a document being added, 
modified or deleted. That's all you can do. And then the actions you can take with it. Let me check my notes here. The actions that you can take with it then are to send an email, move it somewhere, copy it or set a value. But it's working very much on the metadata, these columns, not the actual content of the document. So let me sort of start here with the, the standard thing here. When a new file is added, send me an email. So if you click on that, it will open the designer for creating this rule. And you'll see what I mean about how sort of limited it is. So this is my rule. It's designed to be very natural language. It's not even a flow diagram or anything here. This is just straight out like I'm describing the rule. I've got a condition and an action. One condition, one action. So when a new file is added, always send an email to me. There's your baseline thing that you can do and you can pop a message in there. You can always add, sorry, you can always, you can add, <laughs> reading off the screen, you can add a condition. So instead of always, every time a file is added, we can say when a new file is added, if a certain condition is true. Now you'll see that the condition is the value of, and this is the columns of metadata that you've got in here. So you saw before that we created the review date and the policy owner. Uh, we've got some other things going on in here with the processing, but version number. But you can't say if the document is something to do with the birthday policy, like that's not there. You have to actually be choosing something in the metadata. I'll show you how you can create that column and do that in a moment. But what we could do is say, when a new file is added, if the value of version number and now because version number is a number, it understands that we can do it's greater than or equal to two. So let's say I want to have an updated policy, send an email to me. Now there's a trap here because the version number actually, you saw, takes a little while to process. If you upload a new document, that will be blank for a little while. So the trigger of uploading the document doesn't include that number and then it doesn't get picked up. So you've got to think carefully about if, if any file is added, send me an email is great. But if a file is added where a metadata field needs to be processed and updated, by the time that's updated, that's actually like a modification. It won't work when it's uploaded. Hopefully that makes sense. So you just got to kind of get used to, uh, used to these things. Let's say I wanted to use this to create a rule that says when a new file is added that is related to some kind of leave policy. So let's come in here and say, when a new file is added that's related to leave, send me an email. Now it can't do that because that's not one of the metadata columns that I've got. But if I put that in there, we'll give it a second here. What it's gonna do is say, there is no column for that. So let me suggest adding a column first and then you'll be able to create the rule. So now it's popped up with this. When a new file is added, if the value of leave related is yes, send an email to me. And I can put something in here that says um, something like, you know, new leave related policy update or something like that and create that rule. Now, I now need to leave that column in there, but you'll see what it's done. It's created like a, a yes, no column where it's added the checks in there and I would need to save the changes in there. How do you feel about this? Like, honestly, this I'm working with demo data and this is brand new preview, like three days old. So with all of these AI things, they will improve and get better. As a first look, I'm pretty impressed actually. And I would love to hear how you go with this on your real data and any questions you have. But in terms of being able to use Copilot to manage your SharePoint library and add columns and work in this way, I'm actually quite taken with it, I have to say. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way, if you're getting value out of this content. It helps it reach other people. Let's see how we're going with that. Oh, remember, see my birthday leave policy? Remember I added that one before? That version number has now clocked over while I've been talking to you, less than five minutes or so, version number two. If I want to have a look at that rule that I created, the way you find that, it will always kind of when you add something new, it will always kind of go to this autofill activity. So let's just close that one out. You can always get back to that. So this little three dots here, depending on your zoom factor, if I zoom down a little bit, you'll see more things in the menu there if you go up and down. If you can't see it, you always want to go here. Autofill columns will take you back to that recent activity so you can sort of see what it's been working on. But if I come in here and say automate, 
This is where if you're a power automate person, you're living in this world and you will still live in this world. But if you're using these natural language rules, this is where you can also get to. If you don't want to do it chatting with the knowledge agent, putting the language in, you could come straight in here and say, create a rule and start from a template. When a file is deleted, do something. So you can work from there. You can also come in here and say rules, manage rules. And this is where I've got the rules that I created in the past. And I can toggle those on or off if I don't want them working for a while. So you'll see the one I was doing before is rather than when a document is created, when a new document is, when a file is modified, because what's happening, I upload a document, it comes up with a blank version number that processing happens in the background and it gives it a version number using the AI to figure out what that is. That's a modification to the metadata and I send an email to myself. And if you do something like that, I prepared this one earlier, then you will get an email that looks like this. So I added that, it classified it as version three, and then it shows me that and I can go in and, and take a look at it. So it sends that email through. You can choose to delete that rule if you like, uh, or cancel that. And as I said, toggle those things on or off as you like. So that's two things so far. We've looked at how to organize the library. We've looked at how to create rules. The other thing that you can do with this wonderful new agent here is create a new view and ask a question actually is a bonus one. I'm going to sort of combine these things together. So if I say create a view, then what we could do is to say show all policies which are higher than version one grouped by owner. All right. So this is essentially using natural language to filter, query, organize, and it will change the format. Here we go. So now we've got only things that are version two or over owned by me. There's nine of them. And in fact, uh, now I've asked for owner, not policy owner. Let's try again. <laughs> Let's come in here and say show. So what we're going to do, if you make a mistake, because you always do, I always like to show that I don't get it right the first time either. Let's come in here and try that again. Pa grouped by, you've got to be careful, policy owner. And let's see what it does this time. Hopefully you get the idea though. So you can sort of have this almost like a structured grid. So now we've got the policy owner is people and culture. Policy owner is unknown. So we can organize it that way. The other thing here, a little bit of a bonus, I said I was going to show you three things that I'm kind of combining this one to the last one here is the fourth thing is that you can ask it a question. So if you come in here and ask a question, for instance, something like this, let's say there is a change to the EEO legislation, that's the uh, Equal Employment Opportunity legislation. So I can come in here and say list all policies that would be affected by a change to the EEO legislation. Now, unlike what I was doing earlier where it had to create metadata and I was doing a very structured activity, this is now a completely sort of unstructured activity where I'm just asking natural language questions about this. Let's say in my scenario here, we know there's been a change to this legislation. I need to know which policies are going to be affected. It's actually able to answer questions from my data. So this is a little bit more like what you used to be able to do with the SharePoint agents, but more sophisticated. So this is now coming through and saying, here we go, we've got an EEO policy, you'd really hope it would pick that one up, uh, anti-discrimination policy, diversi diversity, inclusion, grievance. So it's actually giving me a list of all of those things. And then I can take that and copy it and move that forward. You can also if we come in here and ask a different question, do something like, for instance, so remember I changed the birthday leave before, policy before. What is the difference between birthday leave policy version one and version two? We all know what the answer is supposed to be because you saw me do it. We changed it, remember, that only full-time employees were eligible for birthday leave. So it should be able to do this. There we go. Version one, all employees. Version two, only full-time employees. That's the knowledge agent. Like I said, this is brand new in preview. Let me know what your real experiences are like. More agent goodness here. And don't forget to subscribe to help support the channel. As always, thank you for watching.